Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody is enjoying your weekend. Look, I'm not gonna be long. Uh, I just wanted to touch bases on an update on something that I posted earlier in the week uh, that was heavy on my heart. Someone who had some insight on it uh, dropped a little quick one on me. And so I want to kind of talk about it real briefly. Uh, it's not a whole lot because if you want to see the whole story, you can go back to the post. But I posted a post, basically the title was something like 14-year-old uh, shot 18 times, uh, another 14-year-old in Georgia uh, killed. No, that's not, I take that back, that's not the one. The one I uh, posted, that just goes to show how many of our young kids are dying. Uh, there was another one where two, two young girls, uh, 15 and 16, were killed at a gas station while sitting in a car. A third was shot along with her nine-month-old baby, uh, but they survived. And someone just dropped it on me and said, what happened is the boys that shot her, like I, uh, you know, uh, assumed that it was going to be young black males. Uh, the boys that shot her were, were beefing with someone they knew and they got some kind of way pulled into it, you know, and exchanging words or saying things or whatever. And they literally killed them for it. Um, and the person said, that's why we have to keep our eyes on our daughters. Yes, we do. We need to be very, very clear and careful on our responsibilities as fathers, as older brothers, as younger brothers, as black men in the hood to be watching out for these little girls. Uh, this is a whole different situation uh, than what most of us grew up in. Uh, you know, it, the slightest little thing will cost you your life. You know, it's no more mind your business or this ain't got nothing to do with you. It's like, okay, you got something to say, you get to smoke too. And it's sad, it really is that that's where we're at and that uh, we can't resolve issues without the shedding of blood and the loss of life. Uh, you know, most things can be settled without violence, especially in situations and communities where people know each other. Uh, that should be something that can be worked out. That should be a certain culture uh, in your community that we don't uh, take life lightly. Uh, it, it really uh, amazes me. Uh, those who follow me know that the organization Black Lives Matter is on my target list. I can't stand that. And so to, 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 to hear the term Black Lives Matter just rubs me raw. But we talk about it so much. Everybody's hashtagging it. Everybody's talking about Black Lives Matter. And uh, a, a lady by the name, of, a grandmother by the name of Stephanie Covington, who I brought on uh, the Black Voice to talk about how the senseless murder of her 19-year-old grandson made a point. Says It seems that the only time that Black Lives Matter is when the black life that's lost is taken by a white police officer. Um, because we're losing a whole bottle, a bunch of lives in the black community. Now, I, I, I have written and I have lectured uh, to great extent on uh, the myth of black on black crime. And people say, well, obviously black people are killing black people. So why isn't there black on black crime? Because uh, violent crimes are normally a proximal uh, reality, meaning that they happen based on proximity. What you are around the most is more than likely what you're going to have uh, emotional issues with that normally leads to violence. Normally, uh, most violence is heat of the moment and that happens around people you know. So if you were to look at uh, whites, for instance, if you look at whites, for instance, 85% of white people who are murdered are murdered by other white people. And those numbers go along the borderline. Now, truth, truth be told, that rate goes up to 90 plus in the black community, but that's a number of other issues involved. Poverty, lack, a lack of a, uh, a proper socialization system, a bunch of other things that increases the rate of violence. But the fact that blacks are harming blacks isn't some phenomenon. The problem is we're not in a situation where we can afford that. We must 
adopt a, a culture of self-love, a culture of value in black lives. And that has to start very early on in some type of universal socialization where it is taught on a universal national level, uh, global level, the importance of black life and why our black males are so important. And you say, well, what about the people that are killing? Well, the thing is, the devaluation of life to a person who takes a life started with how they saw themselves. When people tend to see themselves in a situation in which they see themselves as being extremely valued, valuable they tend not to want to risk themselves to stupidity second of all they tend to see the value in other people who they can relate to i.e people who look like them so when you want to talk about addressing value you have to first start about instilling value and you instill value in each individual starting early on in life you, you, you have to create a culture where the the lead is respect and love and an understanding of how important if I don't understand how important I am I don't see a I don't see a purpose and a place and I'm just I'm just here and I'm gonna do whatever and I can tell you that it's not based on intellect it's not based on academic capacity because I can tell you I was an A student and I was headed to a quick death because I had a quick temper and I wasn't afraid of anything. And so it's by the grace of God that I'm still here. That's that's all I can tell you. God had purpose on my life. And so uh, that's all I can tell you because I, I shouldn't be. Lord knows what some of the things that I've been through I shouldn't be. But what happened is that was a point where I realized that that was a purpose bigger than me. And it started with my firstborn. And then I realized, wow, I can't leave this, can't leave this kid. I can't leave this kid to fend for themselves. I can't leave this kid to figure this thing out. Uh, a lot of it, we're gonna grow up together because I was young. We're gonna grow up together, but we're gonna figure it out. And it changed everything. Now it was important for me to be here. And, 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 and the crazy thing is, I started looking at other black males my age and saying, man, I don't wanna rob their family of them. I don't want to rob them of maybe doing something unbelievably exceptional because of who they are now, you know, and I know a few of them that turned out well. A lot of them were lost to the game, but there were a few that you would have looked at them and you like, just like me, the kid's not going to make it. You know, everybody was like, Rick, Rick was two different people. The person in the school, the teachers would never know was the person out there. And I never started one thing in my entire life. I never sit up and just was out messing in anybody else's business. I wasn't out there trying uh, to hustle and gank nobody. I wasn't out there uh, doing crazy stuff. I didn't get affiliated with any gangs. I just had a real short fuse. I didn't start it, but I had a literally a propensity to finish this stuff. And so it was like, I walked around with a chip on my shoulder. Just, just please mess with me. And you know, again by the grace of God but the thing is life will snatch you out of destiny but life will also cause you to snatch other people out of destiny and everybody loses we can't afford that in our community these baby girls you know you would think if you're in the street you know the street you know the rules you know the code you don't get involved in stuff you know but the thing is nobody thinks ahead nobody is trained and taught to think and project ahead to think about what their decisions will lead to nobody is thinking you know what happens if this gets deep and they roll up on us you know how will my mama feel if i'm 15 years old and she's got to bury me how will my mama feel if i'm 16 year old 16 years old and she's got to bury me you know what am i doing you know but more importantly why don't I have something in my mind in my life at 15 and 16 that I'm I'm striving for that keeps me focused and out of bull crap? We're missing on so many different uh, aspects of developing children that win, building strong children, building strong black men, strong black young sisters, 
we're missing and it's on us i just had to come back those babies died because they got caught between uh, a group of two groups of dudes beefing about something and then the crazy thing is the dudes are still alive and the girls are dead and again that cannot be acceptable. The OGs in the hood, we need to sit down with them. The old, I mean, serious, real OGs in the hood. They know better, but they're not doing anything about it. They, they, I don't know what it is, but these young cats need to be reeled in. And it may get hard before it gets better, but they got to be reeled in. Or we, we might as well just pack it up. You know, you know, I'm telling you like this here. It's only so far I'm going if my people don't get it before I move my family out of here. I, I don't mean out of the neighborhood. I mean out of the country. You know, my business is travel. Every last one of them travel. And my thing is I can write and do all that other stuff and I can work with clients. Right now, I got clients in the UK, clients in South Africa, clients in Australia, uh, clients in Ireland. So. I've already proven to myself that I can take clients anywhere and be very effective at what I do. Matter of fact, I don't think I have any clients as of right now today that are in Houston. I've got people that, you know, buy products and, you know, services and things like that, but I'm talking about somebody I'm working with on an ongoing basis. Um, and you know but so i could do that my thing is i'm not trying to leave my people behind but what i am going to say is i'm not going to sit up here and just work for something when i'm watching nobody cares you know when i get to that point where i believe nobody cares when i mean nobody i mean enough people to make a difference when we get to that threshold where where we don't have enough people to make an impact and we're just sitting up here watching each other kill each other and, and throw our lives away and, and, and yield to the system in, in, in mass numbers. And we're not that far off. We're not that far off. But when I get to that point, I'm going to pack my family up. Those that are still young enough, and I don't have that many, thank God, I'll, most of mine are gone. You know, I'm going to tell those, y'all want to roll, y'all roll, but we, we, we setting up somewhere remote where we can chill all I need is internet connection. And that's almost guaranteed anywhere now. You can sit up and pull it from satellite. So I'm I'm there right now. I want to see what I know is possible. But we can't keep letting our kids kill each other and think we're going to actually experience liberation and empowerment. Your future is destroying itself right in front of your eyes. And what they're going to do is create another generation that's worse. It's hard to look through life and see generational epiphanies where two or three generations have a massive decline and then a generation comes along and decides, man, they've been doing it wrong. We're going to do it different. We have work to do. And I'm going to leave it on that note. Uh, my heart goes out to the family of those babies that had to bury their daughters. Um, the fact that black males can roll up on black females and dump on them like that. I mean, like I said, I grew up in, a, I grew up <laughs> seeing some stuff and experiencing some stuff and the girls were safe it mean it didn't mean that they didn't get into it with each other but you didn't it was i mean it wasn't a common thing to see the guys rolling on chicks excuse my excuse my terminology because i know we're in a whole different world now but you didn't see that you you didn't roll up on girls you know you didn't roll up on girls like that i mean I don't know. It just became okay to just... But see, that goes from all of this bull crap the people we support now. We think it's cool for dudes to be uh, dropping down on women. 
because we feel in some kind of way about how a woman did us. So we make it okay to mishandle a woman. See, mishandling a woman doesn't start with shooting them. It starts with how you talk to them. It starts with how you treat them outside of the physicality of any relationship or any encounter. Then it eventually it gets to the point where you take that uh, mental, emotional aggression and it, and, and it becomes psychological, spiritual, and eventually physical. Then it becomes a point where you desensitize to the fact that she's different. No matter how thrown off she may be, no matter how crazy uh, she may be acting, that ain't it. You know, and if anybody knows me, knows that I've been in situations where people were like literally saying, if you do, dog, I understand. And this was with somebody that, you know, I was with that was just, I mean, just out there. But I didn't. And I wouldn't. And so I said all that to say, we got work to do. I got to run and make run some errands uh, real quick. But I just had to drop that on you. Look, I'm about to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. We've got work to do. Don't forget, if show some love. Go to the description box and support the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project. We need you more than ever because our communities need us more than ever. On that note, I'm out. Take care.